الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولهم بعد. Short خاطرة today إن شاء الله. I just recited uh, Surah Noon, Surah Al-Qalam, and the first verses are actually very powerful because they tell us the akhlaq of the Prophet some the blessings that he was given, and they contrast him with the worst of the akhlaq. So let us quickly go over the first few verses of Surah Al-Qalam so that we can benefit, inshaAllah ta'ala, from this early Meccan revelation. Noon wal-Qalami wa ma yasturun. Noon is one of the Verses, the letters at the beginning of the surahs, we don't know its meaning. Alif, lam, mim, ha, mim, we don't know its meaning. Walqalami wa ma yasturun. Allah gives a qasam by the pen and what the pen writes. Imam al Qurtubi says there are three pens that is referenced in this verse. The first is the divine pen, the second is the angelic pen, and the third is the human pen. What are these three pens? The first is the divine pen. What is the divine pen? Our Prophet ﷺ said the first thing that Allah created was the qalam. This is the divine qalam, the divine pen. He said to the pen, write. The pen said, what should I write? The, Allah said, write everything that shall happen from now until the day of judgment. So the pen wrote, this is the lawh al-ma'fuz. This is the divine pen that has written upon the preserved tablets everything that shall happen. So Allah gives a qasam by that pen. The second pen is the angelic pen. What is the angelic pen? The angelic pen is the pen of the angels. There is an angel on our right and an angel on our left. And these angels record our deeds. So this is the angelic pen. So Allah gives a qasam by the angelic pen as well. This is our own, what we have done, the deeds. And the third is the pen of men. And right? This is the ta'aleem that Allah has given us, right? So Allah is giving a qasam by his miracle and blessing to us to teach us how to transmit knowledge to other generations. This is unique to our species. Animals cannot cumulatively, you know, benefit the next generation. Allah has given us the permanent recording of our knowledge and the ability to transfer our knowledge to a complete stranger, generations, centuries away. This is the best blessing of the qalam. So Allah says, Noon wal qalami wa yasturun. Then Allah mentions three blessings that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had. Number one, ma anta bi ni'mat rabbik majnoon. Number two, وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْنَ غَيْرَ مَمْنُونَ Number three, وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَعَلَ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Three blessings. Number one, Ya Rasulallah, you are not by Allah's blessings a person that doesn't have intelligence. You're not a madman. I.e., you have the best intelligence. When the Quraysh accused him, they said, you've gone crazy, you've lost it. And Allah says, you are the most intelligent. You have the best intelligence. This is the blessing of body and mind, of the blessings that Allah has given. And our Prophet is the one that embodied, embodies it the best, is the blessing of the mind. So Allah praises that you have the mind, you have the ability to think. So this is a blessing that all of us who have it, we should thank Allah. There are those that are born, they're not able to think properly. We know them. In our midst, they are tested and tried, and their families are tested and tried. We thank Allah for the blessing of the mind. Number two, the blessing of guidance, the blessing of reward. You shall get a lot of reward. You are upon guidance. So the blessing of iman, the blessing of being connected with Allah, the blessing of earning rewards. This is the blessing of Islam. The two are not the same. There are plenty who have the blessing of the mind, but they're not guided to the blessing of Islam. Correct? So the two are not the same. We thank Allah. We have the mind. All of us here. And we have the blessing of Islam. Then number three, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And you have the blessing of akhlaq. Not just any akhlaq, Ya Rasulullah. You have the highest of akhlaq. There is nobody in the entire creation who has better akhlaq than you. Your khuluq, your mannerisms, your characteristic are the best of the best. And this is a separate and distinct blessing because there are some people, they're not that intelligent and they might not even be Muslim, but they have good akhlaq with the people, right? And there are those, they have even... Iman, but they're bad akhlaq. 
So if you really have good iman and good akhlaq and put it together, this is the best of the best. And generally speaking, more iman and more akhlaq go hand in hand. However, it is not necessary for the two to be intertwined. You can be good in your rituals and be praying tahajjud and going and fasting and going in Ramadan, but your akhlaq is bad. We seek Allah's refuge. And there are people like this, perhaps we all know some of them, billah. we seek Allah's refuge. And there are those people whose iman is weak, but mashallah, they're kind, compassionate, caring, and merciful. In fact, there are those who don't even have iman. Do we not have colleagues and friends who are of other faith traditions, and yet their akhlaq are good? So the three are distinct blessings. But the best blessing is to combine all three. And that's what, inshallah, we should all strive for. And our Prophet said, what did he do? He combined all three of them to the perfection. Contrast to this is a series of verses. We don't have time to go into every single one. Obviously, time is limited. But let me just quickly go over those that talk about the worst of akhlaq. When Allah Azza wa Jal contrasts the Prophet he says, you have the best akhlaq, he then brings the worst of akhlaq. So we need to be careful, especially of this list of akhlaq that has been contrasted with our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَسَتُبْصِرُ وَيُبْصِرُ بِإِكْمُ رَفْتُونَ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ ضَلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ رُوتَنِ فَلَا تُطْعِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ All of this is about the kuffar. وَدُّوا لَوْ تُدْهِنُوا فِيدْهِنُونَ وَلَا تُطْعِ This is where the akhlaq begin. وَلَا تُطْعِ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَهِينٍ هَمَّازٍ مَشَّاءٍ بِنَمِيمٍ Ten things are mentioned, literally. Literally, ten things are mentioned. Go over the translation. We don't have time to go into uh, all detail. However, very, very briefly. فَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَهِينٍ These ten, by the way, the fact that Allah mentions them right after saying you have the best akhlaq shows that these are the worst akhlaq. So we have to be very careful that we don't fall into any ten of them. Do not obey those that are حَلَّافٍ مَهِينٍ حَلَّاف means... He is constantly giving a qasam in Allah's name and he doesn't care about how big of a deal it is. Wallahi, my merchandise is the best. Wallahi, I purchased this for this much. Wallahi, this is the best man. He says, Wallahi, and he doesn't care when you mention the name of Allah. You have to think it's a big deal. When you give a qasam, you cannot give a qasam in the name of Allah unless it is the truth. So this person, he is swearing in a batil, in a false manner. So when we use the name of Allah, we use it not in vain, but with respect and dignity. Halafin maheen. Maheen means that he is somebody who is looked down upon. Society does not like him. He has established a reputation that is ignoble. It's not noble. Halafa maheen. Hamazin masha'im bin amim. Hamaz means that waylu likulli humazatil lumaza. This is hamaz. Hamaz means he is being sarcastic and putting people down. Hamaz, he's derogatory to other people. And you can only be Hamaz when you think you are better. That's the only reason, or else you're not going to do it. So the some, and we all, in English we say smart aleck, right? Or somebody who always has that jab, that sarcastic poke. Somebody puts him down. Or with the eye motion, right? Like winking like this. This is also Hamaz. So somebody who's putting people down. This is Hamaz. Masha'im bin Amim. He's always eager to walk between two people spreading namima. Namima means that you're in a gathering and somebody was mentioned in a manner that he shouldn't be. You're like, oh, this is now a tidbit. This is now gossip. I can go and tell that person. And when he does this, usually he makes a bigger story. Usually he cuts off anything good that was said or maybe the context and puts in a little bit extra. Hey, you know, they were making fun of you over there. Hey, you know what they said? This is namim. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, you know, the one who spreads these type of tales and breaks friendships and bonds shall never enter Jannah. لا يدخل جنة قطات. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the majority of adab al-qabr is from this person, namima. The one who loves to tattletale. The one who loves to spread gossip. By the way, Namima means that you are spreading maybe even the truth, but your intention is to break friendships. Your intention is to break the bonds between people. What's your business if somebody said something in a gathering? Why should you go and say something to somebody else? Once Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was sitting and a man came and said, Hey, uh, do you know what somebody said about you? He said such and such about you. Umar ibn Aziz said, If you want, I will verify. And if I verify, only one of two options. Number one, you were lying. And if you were lying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
that oh you believe in ja'akum fasiqun bin aban fatabayyanu this means you are a fasiq if you are lying number 2 you are telling the truth in which case this is namima and allah says فَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافًا مَهِينَ هَمَّازٍ مَشَّاءٍ بِنَمِيمٍ So Allah has criticized you. Either way, you are criticized. If you're lying, you're a fasiq. And if you're telling the truth, then Allah says, I should not listen to you. So which of the two do you want? The man was silent. Then he, the Umar ibn Ali says, let's just pretend this never happened. Is that okay? نُعَافِ He goes, okay, let's pretend this never happened. This is namima. فَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ هَمَّازٍ مَهِينَ هَمَّازٍ مَشَّاءٍ بِنَمِيمٍ He is eager to prevent good. He himself is not generous, and if somebody else is doing good, he wants to stop it. He takes the rights of other people, backbiting, slander, taking their money. I'tida means you take the rights of other people. A theme, in his own life he is sinful, drunkard, drinking, doing things he should not do, eating riba, this is in his personal life. Mu'tad, in other people's lives he's bothering. A theme, in his own life. Mu'tad, a theme. Hammazim masha'im bin Nabi, manna'il wa dhamatani, manna'il khayli mu'tad, a theme. Utullim ba'da thalika zaneem. Utull is a very interesting word, one of the only times it occurs in the Quran. Utull has been translated as brutish means here his akhlaq is so bad that people don't want to be around him his tongue is sharp his demeanor is always people are turned away from it on top of this he's acting in an arrogant manner and then zanim zanim means that technically it means illegitimate but it doesn't mean illegitimate here it means he pretends to be somebody he's not he wants to act as if he's somebody else so he is pretending if he is a person of wealth or dignity and he doesn't have wealth and dignity. He loves to boast. He loves to have an illusion of grandeur when he doesn't have it. These are very quickly 10 characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions after this. Then Allah mentions that he rejects the Quran and he doesn't believe. And this is different than having bad akhlaq. So in this beginning of Surah Al-Qalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the pen and its three categories we mentioned. Allah mentions the three blessings that the Prophet had. The blessing of intelligence, the blessing of iman, the blessing of akhlaq. By the way, Iman and akhlaq are not the same as we said. In the hadith in Tirmidhi, our Prophet said, when somebody comes to you proposing for your daughter and he has iman and akhlaq, then give your daughter to him. Notice, deen and khuluq were mentioned separately because there are people that have deen but no khuluq. There are people that have khuluq and no deen. The point is, this is the person, right? So our Prophet said, I have come to perfect good manners. Means good manners exist without Islam. But to perfect them, you need Islam. You can have good manners without Islam. A kafir can have good manners. We know kuffar that have good manners. But to perfect, you have to have iman and Islam. So Allah mentions the three blessings of the Prophet Then Allah mentions 10 negative characteristics. I went over them very quickly because of time. I encourage you to go back, read this surah and the translation of the tafsir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the righteous people of intelligence with good akhlaq and save us from the bad akhlaq. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> روحا وريحانا بقولك كون